Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through and doing the first trade targets video of the BBL Supercoach season in which we look at trade targets for round two, especially with the double for the strikers. Um, so you may be looking at those guys. You may also be looking at guys that are potentially um, for the renegades as well if you because you don't want to over stack on strikers and still have leftover heat players because that could get you into a trouble for round three with the double buy of the strikers and the heat themselves um, and the double of uh, the the doubles for Melbourne the two Melbourne sides so before we get into this video remember to like and subscribe turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload and let's get into the video so as you can see here I have it loaded up on the um, page here with the scores for round um, round one when Colin Munro, Will Sutherland all went big, Swepson went big as well. So if you t if you if we do this, we'll first go through the Adelaide players because it'll be quite hard to show given that they didn't play, they had that washout in round one that um, who to actually get. It'll be a little bit tougher. I mean um, I can do it sort of um, because I know what I'm <laughs> I know which guys I wanna highlight. But um, we have no scores here, so they're just going to be in... Are they in price order, I believe? Probably. They're in price order, I believe. And you can sort of see who I've gone for, um, as this has my the players selected that I have uh, currently in the updated side that I have for my round two. But um, first of all, the main guy that I think we've all been talking about is Matt Short. Um, 244k we do have to pay up for him he did have a break even of 72 going into that one game and it would have been nice to have seen him get like a 70 or a 65 or something like that just around that thing uh, around his price so he drops maybe a K or two but doesn't have a really horrendous break even but obviously with the washout his break even holds at 72 and that's doubled because of the double game and all that really needs from him is a 50, a 50 in one of the two innings as well as he's probably going to take a catch and potentially bowl three or four overs across the two games um, maybe even more and that will get him up towards that um, hopefully towards that sort of 160, 170 score across the two games but if he goes huge in the first game of the week on the um, on what is it, on the Tuesday I believe the first game of the week is um, that'll help him to, I guess, push towards that huge, um, huge score. As I just quickly look here, when Tuesday is the first game on the nineteenth, and the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So they have Tuesday to Friday. Um, so yeah, Matt Short is definitely the one guy that I would suggest everyone get in at this point. Yes, it would be very, very hard to pot against him, but because. Um, I mean, look at his average last year, 78 average last year, and it looks like his role hasn't changed. And you look at his average the year before, 68. So even if he goes under there, I mean, 17, 18 the year before that, 22. Um, so some would say, obviously, that um, those couple were little sort of uh, seasons that um, were outliers, but the form that he's playing in at the moment is, is really good and he's even playing well in the longer formats to the point that he's almost in the one he should be playing one day cricket for Australia to be honest with you and he's playing well at um at the the longest form form of the game so he's um so he's almost in the in the selection mind there as well he's just one of the best up and coming cricketers to be honest with you and I don't probably actually search that up his age but I think he's like 27 28 so yeah he's gonna be here for a while He's 28 at the moment, so yeah, he's going to be he's going to be a BBL super coach uh, sort of king for the next at least three or four years with the way he's playing. Then the next guy to talk about, and I did some background research up, um, about this uh, so that I don't have to go into past seasons tabs. So it wasn't a hundred percent this research, but uh, Chris Lynn ended last year with the 20th best super coach. Um, average of around 54 was it let me I think it was 54.1 54.2 and so that was 20th best right and that was the best batter average of the whole year of a batter only player yes there was guys like short who um, short who do bat and guys like um, I forgot who ahead ahead of him but there were a couple of other batter all-rounders as well 
Um, but the main thing, like Sean, Sean Abbott to a certain degree um, and some other batters as well that had the batting tab with them as well. Um, but if you think about it, Chris Lim was the best batter only player with 54.2 and there was 20, there was 19 other guys ahead of him. And that included 11, I believe it was 10 or 11 bowler only players. Now that is crazy to think about in itself. I don't believe there was any keepers ahead of him, I don't believe, last year. Might have, Clark might have got ahead of him, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but that was just off a brief uh, little bit of research. But that just shows that the value of batsmen is not there at all because they can just get a zero so easily comparatively to the bowlers. Because a bowler has a bad bad over, they're still probably going to get a dot ball and get a... Um, and they're still probably going to get two or three overs, most likely, even if they're having a bad day. And that'll be potentially somewhere close to five, six, seven points. Whereas a batter has a bad day and they get under five. And also a bowler can easily just be having a bad day. Um, go for like 50 or four overs, but pick up two wickets and that two wickets, then that's like a 45 or 50. Whereas a batter needs to probably score... To get a 45 or a 50, a batter probably has to score somewhere around 30, which is around 20 balls faced or something like that, just to get to that marker, um, which just shows the difference in the scoring at the moment. And I do believe it needs a readjustment somehow, and maybe that's on boundaries or something, to just get it a little bit closer, within 5 or 10 closer, because currently it's about 10, the average that the bowlers have more than the batters, but that just pretty much proves that Chris Lynn probably shouldn't be the guy that you go for. I think Baisley is a better option in itself, and I think Wes Agar and Payne are better options than them in itself. Anyway, next up, Baisley, and um, he had a really good uh, last year, 53 last year, 50 the year before that, and 30 the year before that. I'm potentially going to uh, slide on him just because I cannot get him if I want... Um, even with getting the likes of Overton, so I, I cannot get him without um, trading with uh, without trading Jai Richardson, and that is um, that's something that I've come to the conclusion is a bad decision to trade Jai Richardson at this point, just because it's going to help me in round three of potentially picking up. I want to say potentially twenty or thirty points just on like a um, Cooper, not not a Cooper Connolly, but some other guys there that um, Jai Richardson should outscore. Um, like he's going to outscore most of the, the batters, I feel like. Um, so keeping him will be huge over um, some of the other guys. Like a, a Fraser McGurk, I think he'll outscore guys like that. Well, Fraser McGurk plays the double that round, but you, you understand what I mean by that. Tanvir saying that he should outscore in round three and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, um, Baisley is one that I'm going to miss. But I understand if people get him, he looks to be, I would say, probably going to bat... Overton bat six. Nielsen bat seven. I think he's going to bat eight, to be honest with you. Seven or eight. And then you'll have... Um, then you'll have Menenti at nine, I believe, is the plan that they're going to go with. Um, as you have Overton, Baisley, Agar, Payne, and Menenti as your five bowlers. And then you have the two short... Two shorts opening the batting that can provide some sort of sixth and seventh bowler options there for the strikers, but they could go even one shorter on the on the bowlers front and get um, and not play potentially Baisley, but I think they will play Baisley. Um, so I think that the likes of um, Doggett and Thornton are just too big of risks at the moment to go for them with selection wise as. Their um, their bowlers are too stacked, whereas Baisley and uh, Baisley, Payne, Overton are guys that are gonna get uh, are gonna um, are gonna play. So I think that they're better options. Um, next up was Agar, and this one, him and Payne. If you actually look at their stats, they are so awfully similar to the point that they were taking a wicket a game. I think it was Wes Agar was one point two nine wickets per game, whereas David Payne was one point two two wickets per game. Um, their dot balls were like, um, I think one was 9.2 and one was 10 per game. Their strike rate was 17 and one was 16 or so. It was within one of pretty much all the stats. And even the economy rate was 8.7 and 8.4 or 8.3 or something like that. So it was so awfully close that I couldn't really pick one to, um, that I couldn't really pick. And that's why I do have at the moment, if I do look at the, um, my profile here, 
and then we go down here and you'll see here this current um, this current poll is up so if you want to vote on that you just go to my profile and vote on that that should go that should finish up um, in around 24 hours 25 hours time so you have around another day or so for that to go I think maybe even longer maybe like 30 hours so that should finish up on late on the 18th I believe um, that poll so get your votes in there as that'll be huge and that'll probably give me a better idea of what you guys think um, as these guys are so so close and I wouldn't judge you if you went either way on these ones to be honest with you I'm just picking pain because of last year's 64 and it was a discounted 64 that he's got and that is below if we actually look at it Wes Agar I think was a 50s guy um, and he's below him. Wes Agar was 48 and David Payne was 64 and David Payne is 10k cheaper which is around I think two uh, priced him around 46 or so if we look at uh, Kerry. Does Kerry have stats that are long enough? 49 um, Travis Head. There's no one in that range that I can give you an accurate um, sort of price that they've priced David Payne at but I believe it's around that 46 or 45 that they priced him at uh, for this year, um, Kerry and Head are currently playing Test Crickets, so they're Nell and Void, and Jamie Overton is the next guy, and I think this guy pro proves to be very, very good value. The amount of times I've seen this guy in English uh, cricket in itself just go and score a 20 off 10 is just ridiculous to the point that, um, I mean, if we just look it up and go Jamie Overton um, T20 Blast stats. Um, and then we go here, I think this one will show it a little bit. Um, Jamie Overton here, um, where have we got here? Don't need all that, thank you. Um, Overton, where is stats, thank you. Um, so here we go. Set in the blast, 45, 41 matches for 432 runs, which is around 10 runs a match. And say he only gets in, what, two in every three or three in every four games, he's still averaging, well, runs per innings is 14, which is still decent. Uh, boundaries per ball, um, boundaries and ball and ball. I'm just trying to find, does he have a, like a strike rate? And then 15 wickets doesn't obviously um, show that well. But if we go to, um, and, and that's partially, I can you give me a, why is this not? It would be nice if this was working. Stats, um, Jamie Overton. Let's go to another website because they'll probably have better. Let's look at this. Does this show better stats here? Um, just trying to find the stats for you guys. Uh, here we go. Stats, Jamie Overton. That's county championship stats. I don't need that. If you can give me, no, no, that's not the stats that I wanted. Vitality Blast, um, we have zero balls, bowl, five, uh, okay. the stats just aren't showing up for Jamie Overton, so again, we're going on another, um, let's try this, again, it's the same website, but hopefully it has the stats better for him, you can see here, um, I mean, his bowling stats aren't the necessarily the greatest, but I think he's only been given an over a game because the, um, if you actually look at the um, the Surrey lineup, you'll see that they just have seven or eight bowlers, so there's no point in bowling him. Ah, uh, this is going to be this is the website that I want here. Um, if we look at bowling and T20, you'll see uh, T20 Blast uh, 2022. He had six wickets in nine innings, economy rate 8.9, strike rate that's that's fine. Uh, four and eight, that's not the best. One and nine, um, was this playing? This, that might have been back when he was playing in Somerset Colours. And then, um, yeah, no, this would have been Somerset Colours, 0 and 4. And then you can see here in 2018, he does have the ability to do it, 24 wickets in 16 innings. This is back when he definitely had a better bowling role. And you can see batting-wise in um, T20s, we'll do it batting T20 um, all. Hopefully it shows T20. 222 runs in 13 innings and an average of 18. 162 average of 20 Stri look at those strike rates as well those are absolutely huge and just shows that he if he gets to 20 he's going to get that strike rate bonus and you can see here that he averages pretty well with the bat every time so if he gets back to that role that he was having when he was originally at somerset with um with his brother where he was bowling more 
I think he is so much more valuable than what the uh, 125k price tag suggests. I do think that um, he does sort of, if you just look at um, look at these stats here and look at this um, game against Somerset here in the, in the semi-final here for Surrey, uh, if we look at the stats here, you'll see. Look at the look at this lineup for Surrey, and you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bowlers. So that's why he just wasn't getting overs. Like, look at this. Uh, look at this Somerset uh, bowling card here. You'll see Curran, Atkinson, Tom Curran, Abbott, Jordan. Like, there was no need for him to bowl. You've got an international player, an international player. Tom Curran, we've seen the quality of him. Uh, Sean Abbott and then Chris Jordan as well like we've seen the quality of all those guys so there was no need for him to actually bowl and then if you look at this Surrey side there was still Will Jacks in the that was able to bowl uh, Jamie Overton here as well and then Cameron Steele didn't even get a bowl they had a guy that batted 10 that didn't even get a bowl like that's how ridiculous their side was um, that they had a guy bat 10 and do nothing so yeah, I've just that pretty much sh shows to me that Jamie Overton will be of value, and I think he was just being so underplayed in that Surrey lineup. And I do think he was, if I if my memory does serve me correctly, that he was recovering from a back injury or something um, throughout that whole season. So that's why he didn't play as much. And we've seen before with that um, Somerset form in what was it 2019, 2018, that he does have the ability to take wickets in clumps. Ken Boyce, I just don't expect him to play, to be honest. He's averaging like 48 in uh, in club cricket, I believe, playing for um, Valley in the uh, T20s. I believe he's got four wickets at 48. If I just quickly bring that up on my phone here. Um, Tumba, where's Valley? Valley men's. Um, and let's look at Valley here. Is he even playing for them at the moment? Let's just let's go to the round. Well, let's go earlier in the season and just try and see if I can get Valley's uh, scoreboard up here. Uh, no, that's the wrong game. Here we go. Valley and he is. He's got thirty wickets this year in seventeen in seventeen games and seventeen uh, hundred and eighty odd runs. But bowling wise, and then we um, we switch it to T uh, twenty filters. And he's got here four wickets at 46.75 in seven matches. And his economy rate here is um, not looking too flash, to be honest with you. He's bowled um, 26 overs and gone for, what, 65, 89, 103, um, 184, 197 in 26 overs, whatever that is, um, economy rate rise. Let me just quickly do that for you guys that's 7.57 so that's not really going to be doing much four wickets and the um 7.57 economy rate bonus um economy rate sorry in club games i don't really think it's going to produce enough to for him to play over menenti especially with menenti's club form i believe he whacked a 90 and took two for over the weekend on saturday so i think he's going to get the nod over cam boyce house um he's just a batter only and that basically negates him uh, Doggett, uh, as I said, don't expect him to play, to be honest. Ben Menenti, I think he is a value pick at this point. But um, I would be not picking him if you have not already got him because I just think that there's... Um, him and Darcy Short were the guys that you could stash and you should be targeting Overton, Payne, Agar and Short, to be honest with you, with your trade. But if you don't have the enough value in your side to be able to do it, I do think Menenti will be of more value than short. So I do think Menenti will be the cheapy that you want to go for because he's going to play. Henry Hunt won't play. Darcy Short will play, but um, he's currently on the emergency bench for me as I am trying to desperately get only good scores out of him because he is the potential to just go duck, duck, get two ducks, get nothing out of him. Um, so I am waiting on that and there is a potential that Tanvir Sanger sort of takes his place and you'll see that when I do my team reveal on um, tomorrow night, uh, tomorrow with the day, I'll do it on day five or potentially even the day after that, um, the day of the actual game on the Tuesday, I'll show you the team reveal. But um, Darcy Short will be on the bench for me and I'll only be taking his score if it's good enough. But hopefully he does fire. Harry Nielsen. I mean, do you really want him? I potentially will grab him at the end of the year. 
um, when he's like still 60 odd K and I can bank cash off of the likes of McDermott in like the last round. I can bank like 20, 30, 40 K if McDermott continues on what he's doing and it's only like 100 K. But if McDermott's like 150 K or something like that, and I'm still happy with going Philippi over him, then I can bank a lot of cash out of one of those two guys. And yeah, I can bank 60, 70 K out of them. Um, going down to Nielsen who will just flog the bench and then I can also um, just I can upgrade the team and that might be the difference between getting a 110k guy on a single or like getting an out on on a single in the last game week which will be huge um, and then you've got Tom Kelly I don't think he'll play and Jake Weatherald I don't I think he'll play but he'll bat five and I don't think there's really a role there so if we get off the Adelaide filter and I go through the rest of the players quickly here, and if I think they're really tradable, we'll actually go to um, all coaches and we'll see is there a round change. Here we go. So Matt Short's been brought in. Um, I still think you've got time to fix up Will Sutherland. Obviously with that, is it negative, tw- negative 16? He's going to hit another 50, I would expect, in this game week. Um, and 50 is going to see him have a split of, you can see basically here, the projected 48 score. 16k that's almost going to be unattainable if he goes huge again and gets a 100 then 100 that's going to see him go up another 26 27 28k somewhere almost around that 30k range and 30k would be 210 and that's almost almost like you'd have to have a plan to trade out a big gun for him so i wouldn't be doing that cooper Connolly, i think that's a very safe trade-in target i think he's one that you can use as a loophole in the rounds four and five with him on the double um, buy rounds so there's that, and I do think he is one with what a minus 13 break even of 37. You can see the cash gen is going to rip in, and if he goes 20 off 9 again and picks up a wicket again, that another score of like 70 or 80, and he is going to jump crazy. Um, with uh, So he gets another 87. That'll see him probably jump up, I guess, another 26, 27K, and that'll get him up towards that 110, which will just be huge. So he is definitely one there. Tam V Sanger as well, just preparing for that round four. Mitchell Swepson, I don't really rate this because even though he's got a minus 70 break, even um, he goes into the buy and having guys on buys is just going to be so difficult to um, play around with. Um, you could potentially look at him maybe even the round after that if he's still playing well because he'll have a negative break even and be like maybe 130k. So you could potentially still get another 30, 40k out of him there if he plays really well, but I think his break-even will, st- one bad game, that break-even will slide very, very quickly back into the positives. Fraser McGurk there as well. Munro, I don't understand, to be honest as well, the uh, bring him in. I understand bring, getting him out of the side, but I also understand holding him, but not bringing him in, to be honest. Bring in another Heat player that's potentially, that is going to sit in round three. Um, I don't really understand that. Baisley, understand that. McKenzie, sort of, but also we'll talk about that in our break even, um, the low break even episode that I'm going to do with guys uh, that have like negative break evens. That's going to be a whole new uh, video coming out as well. So um, Hamish Kenzie will wait for that. I'll, I'll hold some of the low break even guys back then. We talked about short. We talked about Overton. Um, Corey Anderson just don't understand this trade in as well. I know he's got a negative break even, but he's just playing once around to be honest, and he's not really gonna. I don't think fire terribly much. I think that was just him getting such him getting the twenty five bonus points with the ball that really helped um, him get those points. I mean, he took what two wickets and got the twenty five bonus. I believe, was it, two, was it two against the Sixers? Two wickets and got the 25 bonus. I don't think he'll take two for and get the 25 bonus much. I just think it was sort of the pitch that helped him out there. Payne, I understand that. Lynn, I understand that to a certain degree. Curran, I understand fixing that up as well. Nielsen, not so much actually. Edwards, um, we'll talk about him later in the other video. Uh, Wes Agar as well, I understand that. Um, Daniel Hughes, we'll talk about him as well, and I do actually understand why he's being brought in. Uh, Menenti, same thing. Boyce, don't think he'll play, but I can sort of understand maybe a couple hundred people punting on him being the guy that is playing. 
Ben DeWashis, um, Silk, Henriquez. Uh, don't really understand bringing in the Sixers guys, but this is like 400, 500 people out of... This is 1% of people. You see 1% of people usually do stuff like this where they just create like a full um, team from the team that they support. So um, I will sort of not even talk about anyone lower than that, to be honest with you. And that pretty much is the video of the first uh, trade targets for BBL Supercoach. 20 BBL Supercoach 13 in the 2023-24 season. So hopefully I get through, I think, five or six of these before I go away, I believe. And then I'll have one at the back end, I believe. Um, but that is the video, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.